In this lesson, I will show you the wait until event pattern. In a nutshell, the wait until event pattern works like this. You repeatedly ask, has the event of interest happened? When it finally does happen, you break out of the loop and continue to whatever comes next. For example, here Wally asks, have I hit the wall? 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 Yes, I hit the wall. And then Wally peels himself off the wall. Before investigating the details of the wait until event pattern, let's review the so-called definite loop pattern that we have already studied. In that pattern, a for loop goes for a certain number of iterations, repeatedly doing whatever is in the body of the for loop. Here's an example. After constructing a window and initializing some variables, the definite loop begins. It runs 150 times, each time constructing and drawing a purple circle, then moving and growing the circle for the next time through the loop. Here is the animation that results from running this definite loop example. So a definite loop, that is a for loop, works fine if you want the loop to run a certain number of times. But what if you want the loop to run until some condition is met? That is, until some event occurs. For example, suppose that you want the circle animation to run until the circle grows too big for the window. Then you need the wait until event pattern. On the left hand side, we see the definite loop pattern. It runs a fixed number of times, here 150 times. On the right hand side, we see the wait until event pattern. It repeatedly asks, has the circle grown too big for the window? If so, break out of the loop and stop. Here are two other examples of the wait until event pattern. In this example, the program repeatedly asks for input from the user and then processes that input, calculating something from it, storing it, whatever. But when the user enters a special value called the sentinel value, that value signals that the user is finished entering input, and so the code breaks out of the loop and stops getting input. For example, perhaps the user is getting numbers with minus 1 as the sentinel value. Perhaps the user enters 463. It then gets processed. The user enters 814. It then gets processed. The user enters 22. It then gets processed. Finally, the user enters minus 1, the value that the program and the user have agreed to use as the sentinel. The sentinel guards against the loop continuing, and the code breaks out of the loop. In the example on the right, a robot starts moving, waits until it bumps into something, then stops. Inside the wait until event loop, the program repeatedly asks the robot, have you bumped into anything? The answer might be, no, then, no again, then, no again, then finally, yes. At that point, the program breaks out of the loop and the robot stops. To implement the wait until event pattern in Python, we need three new keywords. First, the keyword while. This keyword begins a loop, just like a for keyword begins a loop. The loop continues while the expression that follows the while keyword is true. Second, the keyword true with a capital T. This is the built-in constant in Python for true. So a while true statement goes while true is true, which would appear to be forever. But the third new keyword, break, comes to our rescue. When the event occurs, the wait until event pattern issues a break statement. That causes execution to break out of the enclosing loop. Thus, the while true loop is not necessarily an infinite loop. It ends when the event occurs and the break statement fires. Note that break breaks out of the enclosing loop, not the enclosing if statement. A break statement can be used in for loops as well as while loops. Here is the Python implementation of our input until sentinel example. 
the while true loop repeatedly gets input and checks if the input is the agreed upon sentinel minus one. If so, the program breaks out of the while loop. Otherwise, the program processes the input as desired and continues the while loop. On the right is the Python implementation of our robot go until it bumps something example. The robot starts moving. Then we enter the while true loop. The robot repeatedly gets sensor input. If the sensor input indicates that the robot bumped into something, the program breaks out of the while loop and the robot is asked to stop. Otherwise, the loop continues and the robot gets sensor input again, checks if it indicates a bump, and so forth. By the way, don't get hung up on the notation here for a robot to get sensor input, indicating whether or not it is bumped into something. We'll investigate those details in the robot exercises that you do in class. In summary, we've seen two basic looping patterns. First, there is the definite loop pattern. In that pattern, something gets done repeatedly a certain number of times. For example, we animated a circle by repeating 150 times, draw, move, and grow the circle. Second, there is the wait until event pattern. In that pattern, we repeatedly do stuff until the event of interest happens, at which point we break out of the loop and the looping stops. For example, instead of drawing, moving, and growing the circle 150 times, as in the definite loop, the wait until event pattern lets us draw, move, and grow the circle until the circles grow too big. The wait until event pattern also allows the user to repeatedly input values until the user enters the agreed upon sentinel value, at which point we break out of the loop and the user input loop stops. The wait until event pattern is frequently useful in robotics, for example, to make a robot go until its sensors indicate that it has hit a wall or has gone a specified distance. A real robot is waiting for you in the classroom. You'll have a blast implementing wait until event loops with it. See you then!